Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, founder of Herbal411.com, and I'm going to be talking about switching over to carnivore. Now, this is a book by Paul Saladino that a patient of mine introduced me to. Uh, she subsequently is not doing the carnivore nutritional practice anymore, but I think that you should be introduced to this thing because it's a nice respite or a nice break from your usual. The bottom line with nutrition in my patient population is that it's supposed to support the activity. I think it's very important to balance your nutrition with your activity. So the more activity you perform, the more wiggle room you have in your nutrition practice, unless you have disease already. If you have disease, especially if it's gut-related, uh, reflux, IBS, bloating after you eat certain foods, food intolerances, food allergies, or even autoimmune disease, I think that you have a smaller spectrum of wiggle room to play with nutrition. It is my feeling that nutrition will serve you to a certain degree, but if you just go out and buy stuff and not be mindful about what you're eating or what's going into the food, that you're buying pre-prepared, you're going to have the development of disease. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of the pre-prepared foods that we've all learned to love are usually going to be high in sodium and preservatives. So, and there is good data in Western medicine that associates higher sodium intakes with higher blood pressures. Even if you're not having symptoms, you can't walk around with high blood pressure because eventually it's going to cause damage before you feel it. And then if you stay in that space of damage for at least a decade, you're going to manifest the disease. And usually it'll happen in your fifth decade or so. So it's hard for me to counsel young people on this is what's coming in about 30 years. So you better start minding your P's and Q's now. So I've decided the best way I can help my patients or my subscribers is living by example. And that's what I did as I tried this carnivore code. And I've done it about three blocks of time. And each time it's always served me, but then it stopped. That's why periodization is very important. It's also important to be setting goals and when you get past a certain goal, you have to reconsider, okay, what's not working anymore? If you don't have a registered dietitian behind you or a certified nutritionist, then ask your doctor. If your doctor doesn't have the time or the bandwidth to guide you, then come and see me. I can see people virtually from a distance or I can see people locally in my Hoffman Estates office. But being the bad guy, I have to tell you that you can't ignore Western data. Sometimes you have to scrutinize it and figure out, is the research out there biased or was it done with the intent of just selling products? If you don't know how to read studies that are published on PubMed, then I believe it's up to your healthcare provider or your statistician to take apart the information, see how it pertains to you. And as usual, this is not meant to be a substitute for medical advice. So please take the information to your doctor's office, especially with your medical disease diseases and see what they say, how you might be able to apply this in your lifestyle and your medical wellness. I've tried this three times and each time I've always done experiments where I test my cholesterol and my inflammation markers before and I'll test them after. The longest I've gone is about three months and honestly some of you worry if you eat nothing but beef and pork and egg and chicken and dairy you'll have a cholesterol issue as your doctor has told you but none of my cholesterol is bumped up. I'll see if I can put links to my videos that I've done in the past but you have to understand this is only a study that is done with an N of one meaning meaning it's only anecdotal in my case. There's a whole bunch of variables that I cannot exclude for. One is that I exercise all the time. Two is that I try to always maximize on sleep with medicines, mindfulness, and the implementation of cannabinoids. And then I do have the bandwidth to manipulate my own nutritional practice on a regular basis. So I've gone from plant-based, pure vegan for about three years to the other extreme where I do nothing but meat for a couple of months. As I mentioned before, my nutritional practices, I have to dovetail them into my activity levels that I'm doing. Typically when I choose carnivore, I'll always go into the heavier hypertrophic type of exercise on my way back to the middle ground of Mediterranean diet. I just have to make sure I don't overeat. When I go into pure plant-based, which I will probably return to sooner or later, I just have to make sure that I get enough protein or amino acids so I don't hurt myself in the gym or on the trail. That's kind of my journey in a nutshell. I go back and forth depending on my age or my goals. Since I turned 60 this summer, I really have the goal of longevity. And typically you have to front load that with a lot of investment. 
I mean investment in muscle girth, decreasing waist size, decreasing BMI, increasing endurance and power. So if that's my goal by the time I hit 70, which is going to be 10 years from now, and knock on wood, I don't run into any medical problems, I'll hopefully get into my 80s and 90s with at least a little bit of strength, a little bit of independence, and hopefully my cognition will be intact. Typically, the things that you do to optimize your skeletal muscle system will also benefit the neurological system and your memory. Carnivore nutrition practice has been around before Paul Saladino came out with yeah. the book. If you want to break it down into a nutshell, I think that the reasons that it works is because that you're changing what gets exposed to your gut. And there are some arguments that certain plants are healthy with fiber, but also certain plants carry a chemical cocktail that protects them and irritates us. But it does it in a low volume, smoldering way, so you don't notice it. I think that if you break your food down into macronutrients, it might be easier for you to decide how this works. If you pick carnivore, then you're going to be doing nothing but protein, a little bit of fat, and very low carbohydrate. If you pick plant-based, you're going to be doing a lot of carbohydrates, some protein, and a little bit of fat. And if you do Mediterranean, you'll do a mixture of both. But regardless of the three different options, and there's more in between that, it's better than standard American dieting. And I think the big sin in standard American dieting is just sugar. And I don't mean just the white sugar, I'm talking about the sugar you don't see. So you have to be aware about reading nutritional panels. But again, to make this video somewhat short, I would always say if you're going to go from plant to Mediterranean to carnivore, pick a two to three month window. Also sprinkle in a form of activity weekly to match your nutritional practice. And hopefully you'll get to the end point with all your goals hit and gains as far as muscle mass, better digestion, better sleep, or less inflammation. And that's where I'd ask you to request from your doctor, can you get a panel of blood tests? Now list down the blood tests that I like, but you also have to make sure that it's covered by your insurance. Otherwise you get stuck with big copays. But moving forward, I think it's more valuable to have the data, maybe an imaging test, in addition to your blood pressure, your waistline, your fat mass, and maybe your VO2 max. Again, I think it's important to not ignore the information that's out there, especially with the ACC AHA guidelines on cholesterol. If you're floating at elevated, okay, that's fair as long as you don't have that many medical problems, but if you're floating in the 190 range as far as your LDL, or your triglycerides are high, or your HDL is low, or you're a diabetic with high blood pressure, it's really important to understand, or anticipate what's going to happen with your metrics once you switch over your nutritional practice. Again, that should be a conversation heavier with your dietitian, your physician, or again, go to my website and be an annual member. And we should be able to take apart the speed bumps and anticipate where you're going to have challenging times on your journey to optimizing your lifestyle. This is also important to understand when you make any kind of changes, whether you're going from carnivore to plant-based, plant-based to carnivore, or you're doing some form of fasting, you're going to have some withdrawal. So when you initiate this thing that you switch over, again, having the end point of two to three months is very exciting. You can get your calendar. It gives you a focus and gives you direction, keeps you motivated when times are tough. Do not initiate your change during times when you have to take exams, when you're going to be going through an interview, when you're going to be putting a high cognitive demand on your brain, or when you're going to be doing some physical endurance. Those are the times that you do not want to go through withdrawal. And the withdrawal will be something like irritability, problems with sleep, brain fog. I've had some people have chest pain, muscle cramps, constipation, diarrhea, or mixed mixtures of both and just being crabby. But typically, whether it's caffeine, sugar, or excessive carbohydrates, the body usually adapts to the change in about a week to 10 days. You and your physician can deploy medicines to get you through that week, but hopefully you get over the hump and then you can get on to the rest of your journey. And, and please be cautious. Don't listen to some of the people online because they'll say, you can do this and eat as much as you want. The bottom line with any of these diets is that total caloric intake has to match the activity, the sleep quality, and your personal metabolism. It is a little bit challenging to measure that. You can get a basal metabolic rate, but really if you use food tracking like MyFitnessPal or other apps out there, you should be able to know what you're doing now before you initiate your journey and kind of maintain the, at least the caloric intake to be about the same. Eventually you'll interpret what feels good, what doesn't feel good, the volume that serves you, and always take those metrics moving forward to make sure you're not falling off the edge. As far as the mechanics, I still keep it to two to three times a day. I'd anticipate what you're doing, especially if you go out to meetings or you have to pack your food and make sure you budget yourself as far as how much you're spending per week or month. Always have variety. I think there are some carnivore practitioners that try to eat what's called nose to tail meaning that they take skeletal muscle like a piece of steak, but they also try to get in their organ meats. And organ meats like kidney, liver, heart, they do taste a little bit on the bland side, but there are traditional dishes that make things taste a little better. Or you can buy it in desiccated form in capsule or powder. Also, I think Dr. Saladino does a good job in breaking down the introduction and advancing it in certain stages. Now, if you choose to just maintain steak, egg, bacon, and chipotle, just really important 
do not take those carbohydrates. I think if you have nothing but meat, that's good. But think of it this way. When you have all this gasoline, you do not want to be around a fire. And I think the fire, to me, is sugar and carbohydrate. By the same token, if you stay into a plant-based diet where it's high carbohydrates, I would probably try to avoid a lot of animal products. Believe it or not, the unhealthy combination of those macronutrients usually sets you up to become a standard American diet practitioner. And then you're just going to wind up with the same old crap as before. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes and cognitive disorders. So if your doctor will allow you to get the blood test before, do the blood test after and compare, pick two to three months as far as your goal or window of opportunity, try to dovetail an exercise routine that you haven't done or that you can pull out again to take advantage of the nutritional change, always report to your doctor or me if you're one of my patients in case you start to have weird symptoms. Finally, don't ignore medical disease because if you have it and you're not doing anything about it, you could push yourself over into something threatening. The only problem I'll see is when I hear about patients that ask their doctors about this carnivore kind of dieting, the usual knee-jerk response is, oh, you're going to raise your cholesterol. Don't do that. That's unhealthy. I think my colleagues are looking at old data, which is honorable. The ecological fallacy says that when you applied population data to the individual, you depersonalize their plan. And if your optimization of lifestyle change is being put into an algorithm, you get population results and you will not be able to maximize on individual success. And we all have driving factors that push us to continue on to the other side or maintain ourselves in our quest. But when the rug is pulled out underneath your feet, the motivation to continue anything is really low. And that's why I think you should have a nutritionist or a physician that's behind you to support and give you guidance through this journey. So I know I didn't talk about the details of this thing, but at least hopefully you'll start some conversations with you and your doctor, your coach, or your nutritionist. And again, I'm available for consult. If you need me, hit my landing page on Herbal411 and follow the links to New Patient Consult. I can give you some general answers, so leave some questions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and maybe share this with other people who are on the same journey. And I'll see you at the next video.